Hi there, Robin here from Expert On, and today we're going to be talking about audio interfaces versus mixers, the pros and cons, and looking at when is it great to buy an audio interface, when is it great to buy a mixer, maybe you're a customer that needs one of these, or maybe your customer just needs a mixer. So we're going to find all that out and talk a bit about the microphones, and we're also going to be featuring the M-Audio Air 192-4 vocal studio pro which comes with a full-on a two-channel audio interface now i do it says four it's got two channels to go out and two channels to come back in with a whole bunch of features very easy to use like a lot of audio interfaces they're very similar in design it's mostly software which is why my laptop is sitting here um, we're going to talk about the hardware today so we're not jump too much into the software except talking about some of the little quirks about having an audio interface plugged in so we'll get right to it Audio interface, a fancy word for a sound card. Uh, it doesn't matter what brand you buy. Basically, it's a way to take analog, so the microphones, instrument, whatever you want to plug into it, get that at a high-performance, high-quality digital level into your computer so you can mess around with it on the software or use it for live streaming, use it for podcasts, use it for virtually anything that requires audio to go into it. Now, normally, when I do my videos, I have a lavalier and I'm using a wireless body pack and all of that. Today I wanted to use this particular condenser microphone to show you the advantages of having a condenser microphone in front of you. Especially if you're gonna be doing podcasts or anything where you wanna have a little mobility, but you're gonna stay at a table, that sort of thing. Maybe you're doing a live stream and you need to have it just set off to the side. You can adjust the actual gain level of this uh, so it could be as strong as I want, so I can back away from it if I need be, or I can reduce it so if I'm, you know, singing and I, I have a pop filter in front of it and doing all that kind of great stuff, I can do all that. But why would I use an audio interface instead of a mixer if I can buy a mixer that has a USB port on it? Well, it comes down to simplicity. If I use a mixer, I can adjust all the controls on the actual unit here plug up to, let's say in this case, four microphones, some other equipment, uh, get that all going. And then whatever comes out of my main output, usually, is gonna come out of the USB as well. And that's what's gonna go on the computer. Now, that's great, except every time you do it, if you make a mistake or anything like that, or if you're a group of people, you have to redo the whole thing because they're all sharing the same output. You're only gonna get two of those channels onto your computer. Now, there are hybrids fancy fancy mixers that have multi-channel app those are few and far between and they usually have a price tag on them uh, basically add the price of the mixer and an audio interface and that's usually going to be the price of a unit that has two and one right so that being said what are the advantages of that well one is that you can just simply operate it by looking at it you don't need to uh, look at a software program so if you're not comfortable with the computer and you want to make it as easy as possible for you to operate and you're very good at textile, looking at the knobs, knowing how the settings are, that's great, that's easy. On the other hand, if you're using it, let's say you're having a podcast and there's a group of you, two, maybe three people, and two people are talking over each other constantly. They're both having good conversations, but you ask a question and they talk over each other. One person starts and the other person jumps in and you never get... Uh, a good conversation out of it because there's a lot of overlapping. If you're using an audio interface and everybody's on their own channel, because that's what an audio interface is about, each individual input, so in this case over here, I've got an eight by four, which means it has eight channels independently going into the computer. So it processes every single input as its own recorded file. That goes into the computer and then the software that you choose to use is going to see that individual track line by line. What can you do with that later? Well, remember that conversation about people over talking over each other at the same time? Well, you can separate them and turn that into two separate questions or give them each their own turn to answer that question. It'll clean it up. You get rid of that terrible over talk conversation and you can do that with an audio fit. It also allows you to lay down more than one track. So you can come back and add, 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 or you can change the structure of where you were versus the person you're interviewing, that sort of thing. That can happen with an audio interface. For artists making music or anything like that, there's a lot of freedom. Now you don't need to have, if you're gonna have three instruments and you're gonna use one at a time, you can still use a system like this that has one mic input and one instrument input. You can lay each track down separately 
and come back and work on it on the computer. Those are the advantages here. So again, if you really like the, the detailed quality of doing things, you're gonna find that in an audio interface, not necessarily in a mixer. That brings us to the next part where the quality is gonna vary. For talk level, usually this is at the same quality output as a CD, which is not you know, a bad problem. It's like having a regular high def television. This, an audio interface, allows you to crank that quality up. So it's not just like a 4K, it's like an 8K. It's like production movie quality audio. What that means is that I can take that. I'm not necessarily gonna put that out there for public use, but it gives me such clarity and detail in the actual recording that I can start messing around with it. I can start adding layering effects to it. I can clean up background noise. I can do all kinds of things because I've got so much rich detail to work with. And that's what you do in an audio interface. That are the major differences between the two products. There's a whole bunch of other little things, but really if you're software driven and you like to really work at it and get a lot of details into your product, this is definitely going to be the way to go. If you want a simple, easy to use, slide things up and down. I mean, I, I have personal preference to a mixer over an audio interface. Uh, I think it's a lot easier for a lot of people who are doing live larger productions to deal with. So I tend to favor that. But at the same time, if I was, instead of working with finished product all the time, if I was actually gonna make new product, new music, new content, that sort of thing when it comes to an artist side of it, uh, I think I probably would have leaned a lot more heavier on this. So there you go. That's, again, bringing out the big details. Uh, when do I personally like seeing this being used? I'll use it a lot if I'm dealing with folks that are, are with churches or doing small live productions uh, and they're just getting used to everything when it comes to the video side of things and they want to keep it easier. There you go. Some people have people that do the production work for them and they're better at using an audio interface. For those people, I would lean that way. But if you're just starting out and your intention is not to create a six track layered song from scratch, you could go with a mixer. If your intention is to do a lot of live work, YouTube, Zoom, you know, Facebook Live, all that kind of stuff, you can certainly still do that with a mixer. Um, it's just one less thing to have to work with on the computer. You can easily see that off to the side and run it if you really need to. Um, if you're going to go straight to a DSLR, for example, the way I do it here, I actually go from this microphone into a mixer that I have off to the side. And then that mixer, the main outs are leading into the actual sound card that's in the DSLR. For me, uh, it's working at a really good level. It's, it's a Canon, the camera's really good. The audio sound card on it's really good. It matches and lines up for what I wanna do because well, I do a talk show. This is pretty much what I do. I sit here and do a how-to video and this is what I'm looking for and this is the quality I wanted. So there you go. If I was doing more, let's say I was gonna use my computer and I was going to have a wireless camera connected to the computer and do all those type of extras to my production, um, then maybe I would switch over to an audio interface because it would give me a little bit more uh, of an on-screen control. That's the big thing. So why do I have this mic here instead of that mic which is off to the side? This mic happens to be the one that comes in the package, in this package right here, which comes with this controller. And it does have a set of headphones in the box. I didn't unbox them, but they're identical pretty much to what we have here, which is from Sure, uh, except theirs is branded M-Audio. It's a great package. If you're starting any type of podcast, any type of production program where, you know, you are going to be starting off with the software and everything, and you want to have a good, easy piece of hardware to work with, the kit is usually the best way to go. Unless you tell me that you need to have two or four people on a microphone at the same time. If you're doing a live production and you want more mics, then you're gonna to need to go with something bigger. If you're fortunate enough to already have a good mixer that you like using and you don't have a USB capability on that, or you wanna have the detailed quality of taking this finished product and saying, I like this, but I want more quality, I want better quality sent to my computer, you can still buy an audio interface. You would then plug out of here, plug into here, and then go to your computer. You can do that too if you want to improve the quality of your mixer. 
So what are the advantages of this particular model right here? M-Audio has got a little thing going on when it comes to their buttons. If you look at any other models, they got a big knob right in the center. And that big knob is basically for the main out. Uh, the knobs are easier to look at because they're on the flat side. Some brands have the knobs located in the front. They're smaller. You should really be turning them up based upon the signal level you get on the mixer and on the signal level you get on your computer, uh, not necessarily where the knob's positioned. But it's much easier to turn knobs this way, I find, than turning knobs like from the front that way. It's just a more convenient layout for the whole thing. It also opens up more space, so this way uh, your instrument plug is located in the front of the unit. Your headphone is in the front of the unit. Then we basically have two knobs on this side here, which are for line and mic control on this channel, channel one. Channel two in this particular case is for the instrument plug located in the front. And then on the back side, we have our quarter inch bounce or unbounce connections. Uh, right now I've got these hooked up as unbounce. I've got some monitors, which I'm going to move this box over cautiously and reveal what's behind here. Got a couple of studio monitors here. And we now have Two more buttons located off to the other side, which is on this side here. It's going to be our USB to direct connection for audio for what we're listening to. Uh, it's a blend feature, and I'll explain that in a second. Then the last button itself is the knob to control the headphone level. That's pretty generic on a lot of machines. There's also one little switch I didn't mention in the front, which is to turn the phantom power on and off, which also reminds us that you don't always have to be using a condenser style microphone. You can have an instrument microphone for, for an acoustic guitar, let's say. You can have um, a regular SM or PGA 58 from Shure. You can have a dynamic microphone from any of the big brands. It's gonna work. The difference is I'm not gonna have this freedom. I'm gonna have to hold the mic right up to me. That's gonna be the biggest thing if I use a dynamic instead of a condenser. Now there is an advantage to talking real close to a microphone is if you have any noisy space, like this space here is horrible. Uh, I've got a big air conditioning heating unit that runs right down the middle of the showroom, right down the middle, big, big aluminum pipe, uh, thin, makes a lot of noise and the air rolls through it. It just creates this low frequency, rattling, air blowing sound. <laughs> It's just, it's horrible. Plus the machine itself, you get the mechanical run of the engine on the roof and all those kind of things. This microphone can pick that up if it's on too sensitive, if, if the gain is up too high. So more basics. That way, if you have a dynamic and you're holding it up close, it won't hear any of that stuff. Or if you're having a lavalier and it's adjusted just right or a headset, which is perfect if you're outdoors in a windy space. So can we run this and those speakers at the same time. I would normally say no. But for some miraculous reason, uh, I can take this microphone right here. Now that speaker there happens to be only at, I'm gonna say 50%. And we're gonna make sure it's in the right mode here by pressing the mode button in the back. Music play motor. Aux input motor. You know, she does an awful lot of uh, voiceovers for all these new speakers. Uh, so there we go. So yes, I do have this microphone connected right through here and it's playing right off the back of that. And I can turn this up as loud as I really want to. And I can go direct. Direct means that I'm listening straight from the microphone through the audio interface, out of the audio interface, into the speaker. No lap, no delay of sound from it going through the actual laptop. So that's an advantage. If I was to dial this the other way, uh, right now, I don't have it turned on, but what would happen is I would end up listening to the audio after it's gone through my computer. Uh, this has the ability of only having, I think it's about a three millisecond on average delay to something three seconds. That's like no more than me to the camera, which is from three to five feet away. Uh, so there's really no delay, but you also normally have to run a slight buffer on it, and depending on the performance of your actual laptop or computer, you may have to increase that buffer time uh, to allow the computer a chance to process the information that comes in so it can turn it back into an audio signal and bring it back out, uh, uh, interpreted through your software, back into your audio interface, and then out to your speakers. 
that being said, when I do that on my laptop, I'm running at about 22 plus another three millisecond delay, so around 25. It doesn't sound like an echo, it doesn't sound delayed. It sounds like I'm talking in slow motion. That's the problem for me. But how do you fix that problem? You actually use the dial that says USB to direct. If I'm talking to you and there's a 25 millisecond delay, you're not going to notice it. It's just not going to happen. It won't be there. Uh, it'll just be my conversation to you and you back to me. And we just go through life happy as can be. But if you hear your own voice and your own voice has got a 25 second, a 25 millisecond delay, you'll notice it. Your words will appear to be more dragged out than usual. And uh, it just kind of messes with your head a bit. So. To avoid that, you can go direct and get rid of that. Now, if you have a state-of-the-art, high-performance, brand-new laptop with all the memory, all the speed, all the performance you can possibly put your money into, you won't even notice it. It won't even be there. That's not saying anything good or bad about the audio interface. That's all talking about the laptop. It does use a USB 3.0 connection to maximize performance. But again, if your laptop is like this one here, which is probably three, four years old, a lot of software installed on it, a lot of things running in the background. Yes, I've upgraded the RAM and I've done all that to make it as good as possible, but I still have a slight little lag. Nothing horrendous, but it's still there. That is the option to go from USB to direct on an audio interface. There you go. Uh, don't think we can talk about a whole heck of a lot. They do have an awful lot of options when it comes to products. I wanted to keep this video focused on this. Really, if you're starting out and it's only going to be one person with one instrument or, you know, a second instrument laid down afterwards and you really want to play with the software, by all means, this is a great way to go. Again, this happens to be, you can either buy it as a standalone, which is the uh, M-Audio Air 192 slash 4 or Space 4 or Dash 4, or however they like to put that out there. Again, one microphone on the back or line input, uh, plus an instrument on this side here. Fan favorite, I like the layout of it. Uh, or you can buy it in the kit, which is gonna be the exact same piece of hardware, but it is gonna include a microphone, which is a really nice microphone. Uh, and it's gonna include a nice, comfortable set of studio monitors. Um, don't not buy a new set of headphones because you think, oh, I've got a set of Beats or I've got a set of uh, headphones that I've had for my home system or for my phone and they're really great. And if they're not studio, by the way, studio costs less than let's say Beats and that kind of stuff. Um, but the most important thing about the headphones that you have is if you have a set of consumer retail headphones, um, they are going to try and make your music sound better or make your phone sound better or make your stereo sound better. So this way it just sounds better when you're listening to it. That's not good when you're recording stuff. You want to hear exactly what you're putting out. So what I say, how I say it, the tone, everything that comes out of this voice of mine and into that mic is what I want to hear in those headphones when I play it back. I don't want to hear a richer bottom end or a sharper higher end because of the headphones. I want to hear it exactly as it is. So that's why you want to get yourself monitor style headphones. After that, it's your choice. But it does come in a really nice set of headphones to start off with in a kit. You can get this, have this for a couple of years, no problem. If you were doing, uh, if you're doing a podcast, it would take you a little while to outgrow this. Uh, and it's usually because you get really good at the software and you decide you want to have more bells and whistles. But again, these things are what they do, not a lot. It's all done in the computer. All right, well, there you go. If you have any questions or comments, I'm always happy to try and help answer them so you can leave them down below. Remember, uh, if you haven't subscribed, now's always a good time. Hit that subscribe button. And uh, don't forget, hit that little bell and uh, thumbs up if you can. I appreciate that. We'll see you in the next video and bye for now. Thanks for watching.